This presentation will go through the basic features of using Microsoft Teams. It will firstly look at your Teams and channels and how to use these effectively. And then we'll go into a bit more detail about how to engage on a Teams call. When you open the Teams app, you have some basic controls which can be found on the control panel on the left hand side. By using these, you can see some of the simple features that are available in Teams. Firstly, at the top, you have some arrows, which you can use to navigate through Teams and switch between channels and files. Then you have activity. This is an activity log of all the different things that are happening across your Teams and channels. Chat is your own private messaging site where you can talk to different people as long as you have their email and they are also on Teams. A team is a group of people where you can share specific documents and information with. This tab on the basic features panel will enable you to access your different teams. Then you have calendar. This is automatically updated from your email. You have calls which is similar to chat and allow you to video or call anybody that you have emails for. And then finally, files. This gives you a summary of all the files you've accessed recently and gives you quick access to any recent files that you have been on. In the next few slides, I'll go into these different basic features in more detail. To start with, let me give you a bit more information about what a team actually is. Within the Microsoft Teams app, you're able to create different teams. These are groups of people with a similar goal or purpose. You can create multiple teams within your app with different people, or you can even create a team on your own, which allows you to use some of the features that I'll go into for your own personal work. Within this team, there are different channels and documents that you can use, and I'll go into these in more detail. Once you click on Teams in the control panel, it'll give you a summary of the different teams you are a part of. At the bottom of this page, you have the ability to join or create a team. After clicking on this, you can select create a team and add anyone to this that you like. As long as they have teams and you have their email, you can create a team with them. Within Teams, you also have channels. A channel is a great way for you to project manage. In these channels, you can keep all your files, conversations and other apps connected to a specific group of people or projects. A channel can be open for everyone in that team or for a specific group of people. This is great if you have small projects to work on or specific things that you have files and conversations about. Within a team, you can create different channels by clicking on the ellipses next to the team name. By, by clicking on those three dots, you're given a few different options as to what to do in that team. If you click add channel, it'll bring up some more options as you can see below. You can then enter a channel name, a description, and set the privacy settings for that channel. If you create a standard channel, it means everybody in that team can see the messages, files, and posts within it. However, if you create a private channel, you can then select a specific group of people you want to view this information. When you create a channel, you'll have access to two basic apps, posts and files. You can add additional applications by clicking the plus button at the top of the channel. I'll now go into the files and posts apps in a little bit more detail. In the Posts app, you can send messages to people within your channel. When you put a message in here, everybody in your channel can see it. If you want to alert somebody to a specific message, type the app button before putting their name. This will mention them and alert them to the post that you have just created. If you want to format your message in a certain way, click on the A button as highlighted here. In this, you'll be able to format it a bit more like an email, adding a subject, writing your text, even marking it as important and adding a table. This gives you more control over what format that message will be in. Once you've created it, click send, and again, it'll be put in the channel for everybody to see. 
In the Files tab, you can add different documents to share with the rest of your team. Once you put a file into this channel, everybody in that channel will be able to see it. If you want to open a file on Teams into your desktop app, you can do so by clicking the three dots next to the file. This will then give you some more options. You can then click Open and then Open in Excel or Word or whatever application you're using. Once you open a document, you can also click Open in Desktop app as well. This will then open it onto your computer. This is beneficial for some things as when using a document in Teams, it doesn't always give you the full features like it would do on your computer. For example, in Excel, some of the options are not available at the top and you're unable to format certain things in a certain way. Another useful app that you can use in Teams is the Planner app. This can be added to your channel by clicking the plus button next to posts and files. Once you've downloaded this, it is a really useful tool for project management. In this, you can add different tasks, you can assign them to different people, add in start dates and due dates, and also rank them in terms of priority. It's a really useful tool in terms of project management and organizing a team. The search bar at the top of the Teams app is a really useful tool to use. In this app, you can search for specific messages. When you type a message or when others type a message, if you click on the three dots next to it, it allows you to save it in certain ways. You can save the message as important or you can also mark it as unread. You can then search for these things in the search bar by clicking forward slash and saved or forward slash unread. This can be a really useful way to going back to important information or going back to messages you've not had time to read thoroughly. As well as using the search bar to search for specific messages, you can also use it to set your status. By setting your status, you can show to others whether you're available to talk or if you are busy or if you've gone away from your computer. To set your status, type a forward slash and then type one of the options below, either available, away or be right back. This will be shown to people on your Teams so they can see whether you're available to talk or not. As well as using the search bar, you can filter the activity tab to search for specific notifications. For example, you can search for messages that have been unread, where you've been mentioned or where people have replied to your posts. This can help you look for the relevant notifications that you want to access. Another useful function is the chat box. Using this, you can talk to specific people or groups. By entering a person's name or email, you can start talking to them. You can also put in multiple names and emails to create a group. You can name this group a specific thing and you can also pin your favourite chats to the top of your messenger. This can be a great way to talk to specific people about things on your course or even just outside of it as well. Setting up a Teams meeting is really simple to do. In USEN, your Teams meeting should be automatically available in your Outlook app. If you go onto your Outlook emails and then into Calendar, you can set up a calendar invite as you normally would and then click Teams meeting to create a Teams meeting link. You can then invite people to your meeting by clicking into the two box as you would normally if you were going to plan a meeting. Once you are in a call with your team, there is a few different functions that you can use. Firstly, you have your audio and visual controls. These will allow you to control whether you have audio on or whether you can show your camera. You are also able to share your screen and I'll go into this in a little bit more detail in a minute. You can engage in the call by raising your hand or by posting in the chat. And you can also see who else is in the call with you, specifically if you're leading that call as well. When sharing your screen, there are a few things to note. Once you click on the share screen button, you'll be able to see this dashboard. There is a few different functions in this. Firstly, you can share your desktop, 
So if you want to show others exactly what you're doing on your computer, you can do that. You can also show them a specific window. For example, if you have a document open, you can show them that specifically. You can then also look at a PowerPoint. If you click on any of the PowerPoints that are visible or click on browse and select a PowerPoint in your My Docs, this will upload it straight into Teams. You'll be able to click through the PowerPoint and still see all of the features in Teams, such as chat and hands up. This is a really good tool to use if you're trying to present to a group. In addition to this, when you are sharing your screen, you must make sure you click on include system audio if you have any audio files within that document. This will ensure that the people on the other end can hear any videos you are playing. When you are sharing your PowerPoint, you also need to click on the eye icon. This will stop others from controlling your presentation. However, if you're working together in a group, this is a really useful function so that other people in your group can click through the presentation and can help comment and deliver whatever you're trying to show. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on Microsoft Teams. It has gone through some of the basic features and how to use Microsoft Teams calls. If you have any questions, please get in touch with your tutor. You can go through some of these features in more detail. This presentation will go through some of the key features that you can use in Microsoft Word to help you with your essay writing and coursework. When doing a long essay or piece of coursework, it is useful to add in page numbers. To do this, go on to Insert, select Page Number, and you can then decide where you want that number, the top of the page, bottom of the page, or in a different position. Once you've added page numbers, it is useful to add in a context page. You can do this by going into References, Insert Table of Contents, and then you'll be given some options as you can see below. You can put these in different styles and have different information within this context page. Once you have added a contents page, adding headers is really simple. Once you have put in your title, select one of the heading options in the styles page at the top of your screen. Once you have selected something as a heading, it will then automatically be updated in your contents page. When you are doing any academic piece of writing, it is usually essential that you include references and citations in your work. Before you start any piece of academic writing, you need to discuss with your tutor and find out what referencing style you will be using. There are some helpful tools within Word that can help you input these references. However, again, it is essential that you get these references correct. And therefore, although Word can help you, you need to make sure you are double checking how they are inputted. Within Word, there are a few helpful things that can be found in the references tab. Firstly, you can choose the style of citations you want to put in there. You need to ask your tutor to help you with this. Once you've done that, you can insert citations into your work. After clicking insert citation, you'll have the option to add a new source. You can input the information about the book you are using, such as author, title, year, and this will then help you create a bibliography. At the end of your work or throughout, you can then add a bibliography by clicking on the bibliography tab. This looks similar to the contents page and will input all of your sources that you have used throughout your work. Once you have added your references, either by using the bibliography function or by typing in yourself, a useful tool to use is the A to Z function on the home page. This will then allow you to order your um, references in a certain way, going from A to Z. This will help it look neater and more formatted. One useful tool when doing coursework is changing page orientation. If you go into layout, you can then expand the page setup options. 
This will allow you to change the orientation of a specific page. If, for example, you were then inserting a large table into Word, you can then have all of your document in portrait, however, where the table is inputted in landscape. This will help visually your work look a lot better and help in the formatting. Often when you're doing academic writing, you're asked to keep your work within a certain word count. At the bottom of Word, it does tell you how many words you are using in your document. However, if you go into review and click on word count, it'll give you a more detailed description about what kind of words you are using. It can tell you how many characters you're using, how many paragraphs and lines you have done, and this can help you stick to the restrictions that have been put in place for your coursework or essays. This presentation has highlighted some of the key features you may use in Microsoft Word. If you need any support in writing essays or assignments or using Word, please contact your tutor. One site that some students have found useful is Discord. Traditionally used by gamers, this may be a good site to use outside of college so you can talk to people on your course. Once you have created an account, it might be useful to create a server for your course. To create a server, click on the plus button on your dashboard. You'll then be given some options. You can either create your own style of server or choose one of the options available. As you can see, there is already one for study group. You can customise the server in different ways, giving it a name and making it private. And you can also then invite people to that server. Similarly, if someone in your class has already created a server, you can click on the plus button and click join a server. You then need the invite link to copy and paste into this page to join this server. Once you have created a server, you can then begin to customise it. One thing that you can have in servers is channels. Channels are ways for you to keep your information separate. So you can talk about a specific topic in a specific channel. For example, you may have different channels for different modules, or you may have one for things outside of your course, so you can talk about social things with your course mates. To create a channel, click on the plus button, and then you can name this channel and make it private even. This will allow you to invite specific people in your server to that specific channel. Within your server, you have two different types of channels, a text channel and a voice channel. Text channels allow you to send messages to each other and type them out. However, voice channels allow you to have group calls. You may, for example, have a group call about a specific topic or project that you're wanting to do. And the voice channels allow you to create groups for specific things and therefore for you to do voice calls with each other about them. When you are posting in a text channel, there are specific things you can do to grab someone's attention. Firstly, if you type in the at symbol and then type everybody, it will alert everybody in that channel to your specific message, sending them a notification. Another thing you can do is click at here. This will notify anybody who is currently online that you want to send them a message. This might be good if you've got something urgent or if you just want to have a call with somebody who is currently online. Another thing you can do is click at and then somebody's name. This will alert that specific person to your message. This presentation has gone into some of the features of Discord. This website might be really useful for you outside of uni and working with your course mates. 